Can you updates? ask you about the crash last night? So I don't have any other updates. Well, just to, let me just ask you about mm -hmm. the, a larger picture. This is two in two weeks, two in, two in a week, involving some form of police involvement initially. Mm -hmm. I mean, are they chasing down the street? We don't know. But clearly last night was a horrible crash. <coughs> right? um, so, I mean, are you, do you have concern about this? What, what's kind of running through your head? You know, as I said before, I, I don't have any new information. We're taking a look at all of the facts uh, before I make any statements about uh, what happened. Uh, what we do know is that someone is out on the street who now is suspected in two uh, juvenile hom well, the, the killing of two juveniles in Baltimore City. And it is very important uh, to me that this person is apprehended as soon as possible before anyone else, uh, particularly any other uh, young person, is hurt. It was a a horrific accident and a tragedy uh, for that family. Are you, are you, would you like the police department to take a look at how they're responding in these incidents? I, you know, I think that it would be appropriate for me to answer that question after we take a look at all the facts surrounding this. Can you take it for the public who might not know the process as far as what happened regarding 26th Street? Uh, DOT presented a report on how much the estimate is to mm -hmm. uh, return everything back to normal there. Uh, there wasn't technically a vote, it was just noted during the meeting. Right, we, we did an update on the costs. Uh, many of you have been asking about the costs, uh, the estimated cost for the repair of 26th Street. We wanted to make sure that publicly we had that information. It's on the record as part of the, the Board of Estimates. The estimate is 18.5. Uh, million dollars uh, to repair the south side of 26th Street and to um, upgrade the infrastructure uh, so that this doesn't happen again. Um, again, uh, while there's no new information about, um, we knew it was going to cost a lot, now we have a figure. Uh, we also are no, no, fur no further along in determining the split, so if there's, if there's any shared costs uh, by any other entity. Uh, so we don't have any new news on that, but we do know that there's a there's an update on the uh, the, the estimates. So the funds have basically been approved because of emergency procurement. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do they need to be approved by the council now or no? I don't believe so. Do we know, Harry? I'm going to come up. As the mayor mentioned, uh, the purpose of today's briefing was to be in compliance with Article 6 of the City Charter, which deals with the Emergency Procurement Authority. So it's just a briefing today. What we anticipate over the next couple of weeks, we'll be submitting our budget supplementals to both the Council and the BOE. Okay. Which will have to be approved. Thank you. Thank um, you. I wanted to ask about an item uh, that was withdrawn from the agenda. Mm -hmm. That's uh, uh, $44,000 for uh, um, yeah, a the FMLA. to uh, look into city workers taking FMLA. Mm -hmm. um, Unions had some concerns about it. Why was it taken off the agenda? Probably to, to sort that out. I wasn't a part of uh, the conversation about uh, removing it from the agenda. I know that, that it was an ongoing negotiation, I believe, between the Labor Commissioner and uh, other members of the administration and the unions. And, and it's uh, not uncommon. You know, things get pulled off the agenda all the time. Uh, and uh, I know that we have meetings coming up with uh, union officials who had concerns about that. So I don't have any new information on uh, you, why that was put on. Do you know what prompted the idea to hire this? Like, is, there, is there abuse of the FMLA in the Well, I know, I know that when we did an audit of the uh, health insurance, we saved the city tens of millions of dollars. Uh, I think that as I'm, I'm tasked, I've tasked the, the Department of Finance as well as Human Resources to look for ways that we can uh, be more efficient uh, with our resources and to make sure that what we're spending is, it is for the appropriate uh, purposes. So, you know, I don't think any of us expected uh, to save as much money as we were able to save the taxpayers when we did the health insurance uh, audit. So we don't know until we do the review. It's the, being um, used. Uh, uh, the insurance for water meters, if uh, uh, lines are broken, mm -hmm. um, that was approved today, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, uh, why is the city doing that? I, I know it's because um, uh, you think that costs could run high. If people don't hire so I insurance. listen. I, this came up as a as we are you know the our infrastructure needs um, continue to mount right, and we know that there are uh, water main breaks and the sewer line problems or water line problems 
uh, all over the city. And as we were having conversations about that um, in one of the staff meetings, um, and you know, it's very clear that if the problem is on the city's line, it's our responsibility. If the problem is on the, you know, the, the resident's uh, property over a certain line, it's their responsibility. And it just hit me, you know, how many people would be able to pay for that? If it, you know, if they got hit with a, you know, four thousand dollar bill that they weren't expecting, you know, times are hard. You know, I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one that would feel very uh, stressed if all of a sudden, you know. I got hit with a four thousand dollar bill. Yes, it's the homeowner's responsibility, but I don't have an extra four thousand bucks just laying around. And I thought to myself, how many other people in the city would be in that same position? What can we do about it? Are there any uh, products on the market that could that could help? And we started to look at this and no, and realize that nobody in the country was dealing with this issue. So we started to look at it, started having conversations with um, insurers, and we were able to put a very very affordable. Uh, insurance product on the, you know, make that available to the residents. So for a very small amount of money, if this happens where they have that break and it's on their property line, they're covered. Now, could you just give a little more detail on how you're going to determine who is going to be, have to pay for this $18 million? I mean, I know you mentioned it kind of briefly that it hasn't been determined. Yeah, it, I, don't, I don't think, I, like I said before, we don't have any more information. I mean, we're, we are doing the research. CSX is doing the research. I know the state has been in conversation with us as well. I mean, the important part for me is to make sure that the bills are getting paid and that we're making every accommodation possible for, uh, you know, within reason for the residents and getting them back into their homes as soon as possible. I don't, there's, uh, you know, we have to do our due diligence and everybody else does. And after we do that, you know, we'll sort out how, you know, what that, what that split is. I don't, you know, the, the most important thing uh, for me is to make sure that we approve the funds so we can get the emergency procurement done and we can continue to move at a very rapid pace uh, with efficiently re making these repairs. Um, you, you endorsed uh, Lieutenant Governor when he skipped our debate last night. Do you think that was a mistake? No, I don't. I'm certainly not going to second guess um, uh, the Lieutenant Governor's um, you know, choice for for that. I know that he was in Baltimore uh, last night talking to uh, residents, which I believe uh, is important. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, that's all I will say on that. Um, it recently came out that Police Commissioner Anthony Batts <coughs> was involved in arresting uh, an armed suspect, mm -hmm. and uh, in the arrest, I guess it turned pretty violent. Mr. Batts punched the man. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any, do you think that's a, for the public, do you think that's a good symbol for the police commissioner to be doing that? Or is that, um, uh, is that worrisome in any way? I don't, I don't think uh, about his work or any police officer's work in, in the terms of symbolism. I mean, they're out there not fighting crime in, uh, virtually, they're out there fighting crime in reality, and you know I'm sure that he thought what he was doing was uh, right to defuse the situation at the time. I haven't spoken to him about this particular incident, but you know I'm I am um, sure that when faced with what he thought was uh, someone with an illegal gun, he jumped in and did what he thought uh, he needed to do. He's our police commissioner, but you know first word in that is police. He's a police officer as well. Let me ask you about. Uh, I don't know if you heard about this uh, turning point of uh, methadone clinic on in uh, East Baltimore. The president and founder of that clinic wants to expand, but he also says that he knows a lot of the people from Hopkins, the state, and in some instances the city are, are going to uh, block his efforts on expanding uh, the number of patients that he treats, uh, urgent care, primary care, and he's actually talking about a march from the clinic to Hopkins tomorrow. Um, Want to, I want to ask about your reaction when you first hear about this, and then if you have any words about the clinic. So I don't have any information about that particular, um, you know, the, this the issue of the expansion. So I'm not, I can't speak to the Turning Point or their particular plans uh, to expand. Uh, what I can say is that every uh, treatment facility is um, it, it needs to strike a balance between providing an essential service in the community as, as well as being a good neighbor in, in the community. So I, my expectation with Turning Point and in, in any other uh, facility that is providing, again, a much needed 
um, service, which is you know drug treatment and counseling. Um, my expectation is for them to uh, to be in communication with uh, the community, the communities that they serve. And um, so I don't know if that has been done. I don't know if after all of that now he wants to do a march. But you know I, I think that's essential. I think co the community deserves to be uh, in the loop on uh, what the plans are and to to have conversations about what the expectations are about uh, how this uh, operator, um, you know, performs his service in the community. But to be perfect, to him, his march is not so much against the city, it's mostly against Hopkins. No, I, again, and, you know, I know that you want a reaction uh, to that. No, I was I just wondering in case I was uh, giving that information. No, 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 I just, yeah, I don't, I don't have, you know, I don't, I don't understand, I don't know, um, about any opposition from Hopkins, I don't know about any uh, opposition from uh, you know, from the community. You do one more, Dad. Sure. You've uh, <clears throat> you've been asked about tasers many times. Mm -hmm. Just recently, just yesterday, uh, Delegate Brave Boy, the ACLU, uh, other community leaders uh, raised con renewed concerns about them calling the city to review policies, possibly curtail their use. Um, given the recent death, do you, does that change the equation for you on tasers at all? Or, no, I think the police commission was right to order a review of uh, both the taser policy as well as how and when officer, police officers uh, should be deployed to certain uh, situations. My expectation is that that review will be thorough and will um, lead to an updated policy that will be reflective of best practices on the use of tasers. All right. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you, I thought you were going to ask me about all the good shops that were coming to your neighborhood. Well, I was going to. Did you have a? Did you have a? It was a powerful. It was it was uh, a powerful trip, and to you know to be in a position, and I don't, you know, and I guess unless you're there, you, you have a you have a hard time understanding. Like this is where the deals are done, you know. So national retailers, people that are developing these projects, whether they're full retail or mixed use. They're there to get deals done and to go from a place where, you know, you're like begging almost people to consider investing in Baltimore to having conversations with people that retailers that are considering moving their county locations into the city, businesses that are. Is that so, right? Is that what you're, is that the fact? The that conversations we had out there, retailers, businesses that want to move their offices. Uh, that are you know, con you know contemplating moving from uh, the county to the city, national retailers that you know, now are trying to look for locations, to going from a place where you're begging grocers to to invest in the city. You know, I, I told you when we talked about it before that I was really focused on our food deserts and how we can uh, bring fresh, uh, healthy, affordable food to our underserved communities and to be at a place where we have grocers that are you know competing uh, for locations. It was it was a very powerful um, meeting, and I'm looking forward to the the rollouts. The you know the the the, the challenge with the conference is, um, you know, you you go there and the deals are made, but they're not cemented, right? And it takes uh, a little bit of time before it's ready. You know, both sides are ready to talk about them, but the fact is that we're in the mix in a significant way. Um, you know, where the 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 um, where things are happening, and um, the 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 proof of that is the the um, the opportunities that continue to come uh, from that. So, can you, can you give us any idea of some like ta da that you know things coming to? Uh... I can't just because they're not at that point, but um, I know I'm going to be happy. Uh -oh. <laughs> so how about, how about I was going to say location. Nordstrom has a really good shoe department too. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Seriously. Could you give us a location or something? <laughs> <laughs> That's where it comes like, from. <laughs> 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 I, I think Mark's out And so does Nordstrom old. Rack. They have a okay. very... Yeah, correct. Uh, the, That's more my no, that's more my price point. Ken yeah, Crossing said something similar. A couple, when they opened Harris Theater, and he had this mm. conversation with them, said retailers are begging to come into the second phase. Yeah, they are. And that's exciting. It's exciting. It's exciting for Baltimore. With you know, I I I feel frustrated. I know other people feel frustrated. <laughs> we feel like we don't have access to the same um, you know, the 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 same retail options. You know, we have a lot that other people don't offer. We have great small businesses uh, that really speak to the flavor of the city. But in order to have what I believe is a thriving city that you know can continue to, to grow, 
you have to have all of those things. Just like in the housing market, you can, you're not going to you're not going to turn a city around with all new housing. A lot of people want a fixer up, or they want a, a, a historic property in a, you know, a, a, a a established neighborhood. So you have to have a mix of um, of options. And I think uh, what we're doing out there at ICSC is making sure that mis mix exists. In, in Baltimore. See what happens when you ask the mayor about Las Vegas? Uh, <laughs> no, I, I was like, listen. I, what? That was one of the longest answers you ever gave. No, no. Asked about Las Vegas. What was important? It was I know, it was. Yeah. 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 That was productive. Can, can yeah. you give us a location without mentioning uh, the deal or do, where are some of the where are some of the interests? So I'll, I'll tell you that. Um, and I did I give you all my food desert map? No. So I can get you that. So yeah. there, I mean, there there was significant interest in just about all of the food desert areas from uh, from national grocers, which again is a good thing. And everyone is talking about the same thing, making sure that, that we have healthy food options, affordable healthy food options in our communities. Um, so again, I was very excited about that. Um, as far as retail, um, I had a, good, a very good informational meeting about Northwood. Uh, so I, and I'm, I'm hopeful that they're uh, going to roll out some of their, the conversations that they're having, you know, with the community and, and with Morgan. I think is important to, to have them all, um, in the loop. I think that 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 community has been significantly underserved for decades, and the, this is the closest I've seen to a real opportunity to to upgrade. Um, the center, so I was thrilled about that. We had very frank conversations with Ashkenazi about Harbor Place and, and what's possible there. We know that that is a, a really um, critical asset in the harbor, so you know, trying to make sure that we continue to move forward with, um, you know, with, that we transfer what they're saying are plans into action you know, on the, does the, with the upgrades. Does the trouble that occurred in Remington with the Walmart proposal, mm -hmm. um, what kind of hurdles does that create for the city? In other words, oh, don't do it, my God, you don't want to do business there because you got No, I, well, I'll you say this. It's hard to get the deal done. I'll say that I heard from the Walmart representatives directly that they're still interested in coming. They're looking at Remington, and they're also looking at other, looking for other locations in the, the city. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Can you please say Winchester? <laughs> Can we guess? Yeah, you can guess. Like guess. Like the move, they're coming before coming to the store. Where, 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 Do they? I mean, what did they say about that store? They did not talk about that store. That, that's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Who's the Walmart on the water? <laughs> they didn't talk about what I wanted. What? Oh, you're done. She likes. We're late at this conversation. Oh, sorry. Okay. Thank take you. care. All right.